Hey Next Gen students, welcome to our Easter service. Happy Easter, we hope you're having a great day so far. Thank you for joining us for our online service. I wanna remind you that today we will not have a Zoom call right after this meeting. Enjoy Easter with your family. We will have a Zoom call on Wednesday at three o'clock. And remember, Pastor Scott has been sending pizza to those who win the online games that we're playing. So be sure to be there. Mm -hmm. Also, Puerto Rico students, you have a meeting um, at April 19th at three o'clock p.m. So be checking your emails for the link to join that meeting. Have a happy Easter and we'll see you next week. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Easter online. This is a first for me, I don't know about for you, but Easter in an all digital format. That's, it's strange and yet how cool is it that we can actually still come together, we can still uh, remember the Jesus coming out of the grave and celebrating his resurrection and the hope that that brings. There's so many firsts about this. We're all stuck at home, we're all watching this, there's global pandemic raging. Most of us, like I said, are stuck at home. There's a lot of fear. Uh, there's just a lot of unknown. What's, what's happening next? And as I was sitting thinking about all those realities that we, we find ourselves in right now, I was thinking about how there's some, some similarities here to the very first Easter. Remember the disciples that morning? They, uh, they had locked themselves in the the room where they, they had, were staying, they had hid. Their world three days earlier had collapsed. Everything that they had known was gone and a new reality was facing them that was challenging. The leader, they thought the leadership was out to get them and they had no idea what was coming next. And yet one of the greatest things about Easter, I mean, Jesus comes back to life, but it's the hope that Easter brings. And, and uh, there's so many parallels here that I, I can't help but think of like in how awesome it is this year that when we talk about the hope of Easter, uh, thinking back to those people in the first century, looking at our own, um, our own reality right now and just the hope that Jesus can offer us. One thing that's, without, or one thing that's certain is, is life brings loss. As we look at the disciples in Matthew 26, uh, remember the triumphant entry, the whole Passion Week, as it's called. On Sunday, the, the Jesus and the disciples come into Jerusalem, and it's called the triumphant entry because Jesus is riding in on a donkey, and that's like how royal people rode around back then, at least in, in Israel. He was coming in as king, and his disciples were, were following him. This was like the height of the public uh, adoring and waving the palm branches at him. And throughout the week, Jesus is teaching in the temple, it doesn't get any like higher up to be teaching in Israel than in the temple grounds. And every day he's in there debating with the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the other religious leaders and schooling them. And, and the disciples are watching all this. And, and then they go and they have the Last Supper on Thursday night. And Jesus is giving them some last teaching. It's the Passover meal. It's just this intimate time together. And in the midst of this, Jesus this whole time has been telling them things are going to change. Things are going to change. Uh, and I don't think it quite dawned on them what it looked like when it would change. But after they'd had the meal and they, they go to the garden and, and Jesus is praying in the garden, he asked them to stay awake and, and they took a, a nap. Eventually, Jesus or Judas shows up. And in Matthew 26, uh, starting in verse 55, Jesus says, At the time, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a criminal to capture me? Every day I used to sit teaching in the temple and you didn't arrest me. But as this is happening, so the writings of the prophets would be fulfilled. Then all his disciples deserted him. These were the people who had spent three years with Jesus. Everything in their lives revolved around him. That he was the master and they were the disciples and they were learning from him. Their whole life was uprooted in one night. In a matter of weeks, our lives have been uprooted. You know, they all ran away. There was a massive sense of loss here. Their, their reality was shattered. And even more so, you had Peter, who several hours earlier in the day, uh, Jesus had said, you're going to uh, deny me three times. And Peter was like, no, no. Uh, it almost, he had this attitude of, I'm going to storm the gates of the castle with you. 
And you get into verse 57 in this passage, and, and it says, Those who arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had convened. Peter was following him at a distance to the high priest's house. He went in and was sitting with the servants. Even Peter, the most outspoken of the disciples, his world was shattered. Remember, I said he had been willing to like go and, and, and storm the gates. He was like, I'll never deny you, Jesus. That won't happen. And we know the story as the different people recognize him as he's hanging out on the outside, kind of watching. Maybe he couldn't get in, but he, he definitely wasn't near Jesus. They could still see each other, but he wasn't part of the trials. And as he denies Jesus these three times, at the end of the third time when the sun's coming up and the rooster's crowing, he goes off and weeps bitterly. His world had changed. And then that day, that Friday, progresses. There's the illegal trials. He goes before Herod. He goes before uh, the Roman leadership with Pilate. He's scourged. He's whipped. He, he's, Jesus is, is just beaten. And, 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 and then they take him out, and he's executed on the cross. And then there's the, the forced to get him in the ground real quickly and bury him that Friday night before, before the Sabbath hits. And the disciples, notice how it doesn't really mention them at this point. The, the people who buried Jesus were some of the religious leadership. Uh, jo Joseph of Arimathea was one of them. And the women are getting ready, the body ready as, as quick as possible. But the 11, because Judas has hung himself at this point, the 11 have disappeared. Their world has changed. Even more so, if you flip over to John 20, verse 19, and we'll come back to more of this story in a minute, but even more so after they'd had reports and some of their own people had seen Jesus alive. In verse 19, it says, when it was evening on the first day of the week, so on Sunday, the disciples were gathered together and the doors were locked because they were afraid of the Jews. They had heard reports. John and, and Mary and, and Peter had seen Jesus alive at this point, and yet they're still afraid. This first Easter is almost over, and they're locking the doors, hiding inside, not wanting to go out. Jesus was gone for three days, and they're still hiding. The world was upturned. Their world was upturned, and they were still trying to figure out their way in it, this sense of loss that they, they must have been going through. But like I said, Easter is about the hope that Jesus brings us. Now, it shows that death couldn't be conquered, or Jesus conquered death, that our sins were paid for, and that he rose again, and in that, we get hope. Early on Easter morning, starting in, in John 20, uh, Mary Magdalene, verse 1, goes out to the, the empty tomb, and it was still dark, and she saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she runs back to Peter in verse 2 and, and to John. Uh, it says the other disciple, but that's John, uh, the one who Jesus loves, and he said to him, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and, and we don't know where they put him. She's exasperated. She wanted to go, and, and she's probably still in mourning at this point. Her, her, the person that she'd spent a lot of time falling around was gone. She, some people think she's taken out some spices to help get the body finally uh, ready to be uh, put in the tomb for long term because it was a rush job on, on Friday night. So she's going out there with these mix of emotions, and she gets out there. The guards are gone. The tomb is open, and she's like, what? So she runs back, and going down to verse 11, Mary stood out the t outside the tomb crying, and, and as she's crying, she stood up and looked into the tomb. She sees two angels who are sitting there, which how often do people get to see angels? That's cool on its own, where, the where Jesus' body had been laying, and one at the head, one at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why, why are you crying? She says, because they've taken my Lord, and I don't know where they put him. It hasn't quite clicked with her yet that Jesus is alive. So going down to verse 14, uh, she says this. She turns around and, and sees Jesus standing there, but she doesn't know who it is. She thinks it's a gardener, and, and Jesus says, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're seeking? And she's in there, and, and continuing in verse 15, it says, Suppose that he was the gardener, or supposing that Jesus was the gardener, she replied, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him. And then uh, Jesus goes to her and calls her, and he says, Mary. And she turns around, recognizing the voice, and she cries out, uh, Rabbani, which means teacher. But it wasn't just like, hey, teach, what's up? She's seen the risen Lord. And while her reality has changed, there's no going back to the way things were before. Here was Jesus, alive. Death couldn't conquer him. Everything that he had said had come true. What amazing hope that 
provides. How awesome is that? Then you see some of the disciples, Peter and John. Uh, in John 20, verses 3 through 8. So Peter and John, this is stepping back here. Peter and John had just heard from Mary that the tomb was empty. So they run out heading for the tomb. And it says in verse 4, verse four that the two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and got there faster. So it's apparently a foot race and John was a better sprinter than Peter. But they get there. So they stoop down, they go into the tomb, they see the, the linen cloths uh, that are on the ground, the burial shrouds. And then... Um, Peter gets there. They enter the tomb and they see it. Verse 7, Then wrapping the, the wrapping that had been on his body was lying on the, in the linen cloth were folded up in a separate place. So they get in and they see this empty tomb. They haven't seen Jesus yet, but they, they see this empty tomb. And then verse 8 is the linchpin of this. The other disciple who had reached the tomb first, this is John, also went in and saw and believed. Belief is a powerful thing and the hope that, that comes from that. Jesus had been telling them quite a few times over the course of those three years while he was in public ministry saying, someday I'm going to die, but don't worry, I'll be raised to life. And they hadn't quite clicked on what that was saying. Even in the hours leading up to, to his death, they still hadn't got it. But here, when John goes in and he sees the empty tomb, in verse 8, John 28, says, the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and saw and believed. How awesome, how amazing, how much hope that brings. If you don't know Jesus, this is the most awesome day to, to put your, your, your faith in him. And it's, it's understanding that we're sinful, that that sin demands a price, that the holy God that we've offended with our sins demands a price, and that price is death. And Jesus paid that price. He died on the cross on that Friday but death couldn't keep him. He was in the ground for three days, but he rose again on Easter morning. And that provides great hope. Hope that our sins can be paid for. Hope that we can have a future, no matter what gets thrown at us. Our life brings loss, but Jesus brings hope. And that's what we see in the hope of Easter. So no matter how long this quarantine pandemic thing goes on, how much our world changes, and we don't know what it'll look like on the other side, we know that we can have the hope that Jesus is with us, and, and that's all we need to get through that. The hope that Jesus provides, that he's with us, and we can get through this. We can conquer it. Let's close in prayer. Gracious Father, Lord, we just celebrate you this morning. We celebrate Jesus as our risen Savior. We thank you that he was willing to endure the, the ugly realities of the cross for us. He didn't have to, but he chose to. If there's someone watching this who doesn't know you as Savior, we just ask that they respond, that you use your spirit to convict their hearts. Let them repent and draw near to you, asking for the forgiveness of their sins. And Lord, as, as we don't know what the future we brings, but we do know that we have the hope of you, the hope of Jesus, and, and that's enough, the hope that it will never leave us nor forsake us. And we thank you for that, Lord. Just help us to be lights in this world for you this week. Amen. He is not here, he has risen. Happy Easter, everyone. We love you, everyone.